Well, hello and welcome. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, you, many of you know that at Bridgeway, we are coming to you with a series of resources that we thought and hope would be helpful to, um, to our church and maybe even to the community as we are all continuing to navigate through um, the COVID pandemic. And I'm, I'm very grateful today. We're going to be um, transitioning topics. We've got two incredible resources um, with me today. We've got Shelly Dodge and Katie Morris, who are going to be um, sharing with us about finance. And so um, let's just jump in with some quick introductions. And, and I think very quickly, people will understand why you are just a really valuable team. And so it will be some great resources. So why don't you say hello, uh, tell us a little bit about both of yourselves. Okay. Hi, I'll go first. Uh, my name is Shelly Dodge, and I have been in the financial industry since 1986. So that's where I started literally from the ground up in the back office operations of a stock brokerage firm. I went from there into trust and estate planning and then got my license to be a financial advisor and I've been doing this job since 2001. And I am also the local Dave Ramsey Smartvestor Pro and I have been affiliated with him since 2017. That's awesome. And what, what community organizations, uh, I know you're, you're pretty active in the community, so why don't you share a little bit about that? I am. That is the one beauty of being a business owner is that you uh, get to uh, uh, give back to the community, which I really love. Uh, I've been on a variety of different boards. Uh, I'm finding the common theme, it turns out, is children because it seems like everything is either communities and schools, journey to dream, those kind of things. Uh, was spending too much time volunteering, so now I've narrowed it down a bit. So I am the um, incoming president for the Cross Timbers Rotary this year and also the vice chair of the Flower Mound Chamber of Commerce. Awesome. Katie, why don't you introduce us? Hi, everyone. My name is Katie Morris. Um, I've been in banking for uh, over 11 years. I just started uh, getting into financial coaching this year. Um, I am a Dave Ramsey certified coach, and Shelly and I do know each other, and we work, work with each other um, and share some clients. Um, I just started, um, I just moved to Texas from California back in December. Um, but don't worry, I'm not going to California, you're Texas. I love Texas just the way it is, and it's going to stay that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I've been listening to Dave Ramsey since uh, 2017, and um, I, I'm really all about his principles, paying off debt, living with financial peace. Um, and just losing the stress and the burden that money can put on us. I love helping people get through that, get out of that. Um, and I'm really excited to be here today. That's awesome. And, and as a fellow West Coaster, I, I, won't, I won't organize Texas if that, yeah, that, that, that kind of works actually. There's some it does. It here. actually sounds cooler. <laughs> it does, yeah. Um, and you both attend churches here in the area. Uh, remind me which churches you attend. So I attend First Baptist Church, Louisville, and I have been uh, attending there for over 20 years, and I've volunteered in the student ministry, the children's ministry, uh, gone on numerous uh, mission trips to Guatemala where we had adopted an orphanage, and so we were always rocking babies, painting, um, making the playground safer, water treatment, all of that kind of stuff. So I... Um, I have enjoyed and still enjoy my time there at First Baptist Louisville. Awesome. And I attend Rock Creek Church in Prosper, Texas. I've been attending uh, that church since the beginning of this year. I just moved to Texas, so only a year, but it's been great. It's a wonder, wonderful church. Um, I've been able to get plugged in with um, the greeting team, the youth ministry, and the young adults ministry, and I really, really just love helping young people um, through this time in their lives. Um, I, when I was younger, I, uh, I went through some stuff and anything I can do to help those young people get through this and stay connected to, to God and keep those relationships strong. Um, I, I'm right there and I'm excited to do it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, um, so again, very glad to have both of you on. And I, I, when, when we get into this conversation, you both really represent the, the two sides of the financial coin. Uh, Shelly, you have a kind of a, a, a broader strategic um, emphasis and focus. Katie, you handle a lot of the day-to-day -day coaching and some of those um, daily needs and daily pain points that a lot of us experience financially. And so let's just jump in here because with, with COVID, obviously, in addition to the, the, the health side of things, which obviously is, is a, a, a big issue, one of the next 
biggest issues, and maybe some people would say the bigger issue, is the economic and financial impact that, that this virus has had on the country and even on the world. And so um, from both of your perspectives, maybe Shelly, you could talk about the macro level and, and maybe uh, Katie, you could talk about the micro level. What have been some of the big impacts of COVID economically from your perspectives? So um, I think the biggest thing that I've walked away with the COVID is the fear and uncertainty uh, that comes with that. Uh, I have a lot of clients calling in uh, and when I reach out to them, uh, their biggest question is, should I go to cash? Especially mm -hmm. back in, in, in March and April, should I go to cash? Um, so my answer, and I know people don't like this, but my answer is always, it depends. It depends on your specific situation. Um, I believe that if you're young, um, that a lot of these, uh, uh, uncertainty uh, times in the market, it's going to level out. Uh, do we know uh, when or how long this is going to go? No. Now, I know right now you're not seeing that because the markets are having record days every time you turn around. Uh, that, that can't last for much longer uh, because we've got way too much unemployment going on, and I'll address that later. But it's, um, that is probably the biggest thing on a day-to-day a, a -day is people wanting to know what they should do. And my answer is the same with or without COVID. Uh, we need to diversify. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't need to be 100% in anything. And uh, you just need to look at your specific situation. I mean, if you're going to retire, higher next year, uh, then yeah, we need to be looking at that. But we should have been looking at that with or without COVID. So sure. uh, I don't let COVID direct my investment uh, uh, recommendations. Sure. And, and are you, would it be fair to say on the, especially on the, the, the larger scale that we are seeing, though we see some record good days, we see record bad days, and there just seems to be a lot more volatility where there's hundreds of points of shift and maybe even more in a single day. That seems to be not as newsworthy worthy as it maybe used to be. Is that, would that be true? It is. I actually uh, independently did my own little Excel spreadsheet. I, I love Excel spreadsheets and did a little chart to see, okay, what have been the largest 20 days of uh, not point drop, but percentage drop. So, so point drop, it's obviously, or point gain, it's obviously going to be big just because the numbers are bigger. So I was looking at just the percentage and it's amazing over half of that chart. It was in the last, you know, of course this, I did this back in May, but it was in the last, you know, 30 to 60 days that over half of those biggest drop percentage wise was recent hmm. uh, whether it's drops or gains sure. uh, and I'm talking one day one day yeah. drops or gains so that just speaks to the volatility uh, that we're in right now it's sure. um, it's it makes it for a very it's very unnerving for most investors especially the folks that don't really know you know how to protect themselves from that right Katie, what about you on the, and you work as a coach, so you're working more day to day with people. So what are some of the, the effects that you're seeing of COVID on, on folks um, in your world? Yeah, I mean, financially speaking, it's a broad spectrum. You have some people who really weren't affected financially by COVID, but, you know, they have to work at home. They have to take care of their kids while they're at home. But financially, they're still solid. They're making the same money that they were prior to COVID. And then you have some people that are in the middle where, you know, maybe uh, they work jobs um, where they were laid off temporarily and they're making unemployment. And that unemployment was actually more than they were making when they were laid off. And then you have some people who um, are really struggling and they have to get some side gigs. Um, and it, it, it is tough. Um, but I think you know, it's just like anything else in life, you know, you put your trust in the Lord and you go out there and you find a way to, to make ends meet and keep providing for your family. I know one of the things that I did is I went out and I got a second job. Um, and I think that's just what we have to do in this time, um, or find a job that, um, that isn't as affected by COVID. Maybe it's time for a career change. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a, it's a huge spectrum. Like I said, there's some people who haven't been fin uh, affected financially, and then there's some who have been truly, truly affected. And then there's some that are just in the middle where, you know, it's kind of a status quo for them. Yeah. Would you both say that, that COVID maybe, um, we're finding this in other aspects of life, it maybe doesn't cause the problem it set itself, but maybe it, it shines light on a problem that was already there before, whether that's on a budgeting level, on a day-to-day -day budget, or maybe on a, on a larger uh, investment level. Would you say that's true with COVID in the finance world? Absolutely. Absolutely. My March and April were the busiest two months that I've ever had. And 
it was because people were doing their own, for, you know, because they had left jobs and they'd mm -hmm. had 0401ks. And they're like, well, look, I'm, look at my statement. I'm doing great. Okay, well, it's not hard to do good when the markets are giving you average annual return of 15%. But once their 401k started tanking, they realized that they didn't know how to protect themselves from mm -hmm. that. So okay. that shined the light on, oh my goodness, maybe I should have a financial advisor take a look at this. Maybe I should get it out of this old 401k and have it professionally managed. So um, my business actually skyrocketed this spring mm -hmm. <laughs> from the COVID. Right. So people are realizing that their plan wasn't so much of a plan. It just was, a, it was a rising tide and now they realize the tide can go either way. That's right. That's sure. right. And, and Katie, uh, what about, what about you? Yeah. So I think for, for me, what I've seen is, is people who like, who didn't necessarily lose their jobs, but they have friends who lost jobs or family members who lost jobs and are really struggling right now. And them just taking a, a second to look at their budget and say, whoa, if I lost my job, mm -hmm. I'd be in a serious situation and I have nothing to fall back on. You know, I didn't, I don't have an emergency fund. Um, I don't have anything in retirement. I truly have nothing and I need to get this in order. I don't want my kids to suffer because I wasn't financially um, mature or financially literate. I really want to get in here. Um, and so I think that's really the big thing is people saying, okay, this is what's happening to other people. I'm taking a good hard look at my financial situation mm -hmm. and I'm going to make sure that I change it because if this ever happens again, I'm going to have peace about it. I'm going to have peace about my financial situation. My kids aren't going to have to worry about where their next meal is coming from. We're going to have a roof over our heads. Um, and I think that's where most of the people that I'm talking to, that's where they're coming from when they seek financial coaching at this time. Right. And isn't the statistic that it's somewhere in the 80% of American households for, for them, if there's one missed paycheck, it would be a catastrophic financial event kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it tells us that we've got a lot of work to do. Um, yeah. So, so let's, let's talk about, so let's talk about the bad news first. Um, what do you both see as the biggest challenges that we are likely to face in the next six to 24 months, financially speaking? So this is another common question I have is what do I see the markets? And I know that's not what you're talking about and I'll address that in a second. What do you think the markets are going to do? Okay. Well, nobody has a crystal ball that works. Nobody, and nobody does. And they'll tell me, yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. So I, I'm not asking for a crystal ball, but what do you think? <laughs> like, right. okay, I just told you what I thought. Um, so that's really market timing when people want to talk about that. And even the experts that thought that they could time the markets when something like COVID gets thrown in the mix as a curveball. I've, I, I was watching some money managers that manage billions of dollars that time the market that had a history of timing the markets. Well, and even they lost money. So, so it's just, um, you can't really anticipate what's coming ahead. What I do know, just like everyone else, is that we're in record unemployment numbers. And those numbers, and I'm not going to get political, but the numbers aren't going to go down anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And this is why. Think about the travel industry, the wedding industry, the catering industry, uh, entertainment, uh, rental cars, cruise lines, all of those industries that have pretty much come to a halt. I mean, I know the airlines are a little bit up, but I'm just saying there's a large number of industries that have come to a halt. And those large number of industries employ a large number of people. And right now, yes, they're getting unemployment and they're getting that extra COVID money, but that can't last forever. Mm -hmm. That can't last forever. And those people right now, they're not feeling that pain. And so they haven't stopped. Well, I don't know. I, I feel like from looking at the financials of companies that a lot of them haven't stopped their spending. But what's going to happen is when all that unemployment and that COVID money stops, they're going to be forced to stop because at mm -hmm. that point, then they're going to be out. So what's that going to do? Now you've got this huge ripple effect that's going to happen because now the people that used to eat out at restaurants or shop on Amazon or do whatever, well, now they're going to quit shopping and quit eating out, which is then going to cause more unemployment. I just see it happening. Um, I don't know about bigger, but it's going to take a long time for a variety of reasons to come out of this. Okay. And what we, so although we don't know what's going to come, what we do know is that it's going to be a really tough road for a lot of people. Okay. We said this is the bad news part, so that's okay. We'll get to the, okay. we'll get maybe to the, the more rosy picture, but I think this is important to, to have, because I, I think there's also a, a certain feeling that as the, 
the the as the restrictions on the virus lift and, and as we're having a little more normalcy in in society that oh then we'll we'll be right back there but you're saying that there, there's probably a ripple effect um of, of the economic impact that we maybe we're seeing but we certainly will not you know masks or no masks we're going to see the financial impacts farther than that we maybe originally thought mm-hmm yeah. yeah. I mean, just things that you don't even think about, like the, I, I know caterers that are going out of business right. um, and, and not every, everybody they employed. I mean, think about it, rental cars, uh, hotels, and then everything that supplies all of that. So it's just it, the cars. I mean, I mean, even buying cars, people have stopped buying cars. So it's just um, it's, it's going to be a long it's going to be a long recovery, okay. longer than I think a lot of people realize. Katie, what, what's your what's your take? I mean, I, I definitely agree with that. The recovery is going to take is going to take a while. This isn't going to be an overnight fix. It's not something that DC, DC is going to be able to fix overnight. As much as we wish they could, they they just can't. Sure. Um, and so, um, I, you know, but I don't want to just get all doom and gloom. I mean, there is hope. There is things that you guys can do. Um, there's there's steps that you can take to not be affected as badly by that, that recovery and to still be financially secure and protect your family. Um, but yeah, I totally agree that it's going to be a while until we get out of this or find some sense of the normalcy that we had prior prior to COVID. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that that's a good that's a good transition. Let let's start talking a little bit about what we can start to do. Okay, let's let's assume that right now, yeah we're in for some, some challenges and maybe we haven't even seen the full effect of those challenges, but so what are some things that people can start to do to protect ourselves? And, and maybe this is where we can start talking more practically about um, some of the tools that, that we have, that we can, we can use and maybe we aren't, we aren't thinking about. So let's start talking about um, some of the ways we can protect ourselves, knowing that there's going to be tough times and some volatility ahead. So my number one recommendation is to reach out to a financial advisor, whether it's me or someone else that you know and trust, you need to reach out to someone. Uh, I give complimentary consultations and I'm sure there's a lot of other financial advisors out there that do as well. Uh, I would encourage you to find someone who's like-minded, who uh, has the same belief system as you do. Um, I encourage uh, you to find someone who is an educator, who wants to help you understand your options and and be a partner with you and, and pick the best road for you and your family, not tell you what to do, but educate you. And, and so that way you can pick those options together. Um, like, like I said before, that 401k statement, oh, but look, I've been doing so great. Okay, you, n- no disrespect, but it's, it was easy. It was, that was easy. That wasn't, that wasn't hard to, to make 15% annual returns, but the roller coaster ride's coming. Uh, mm-hmm. You don't see it right now. Well, we do see a little bit of it. We're going up. I mean, like crazy up, but those that don't think that we're not going to see it come back down are, are mistaken because it will, and we just don't know how bad it's going to hurt. Uh, one of the analogies I love to give my clients is when my car breaks or when there's something that's wrong with my car, I do not get under the hood and try to figure it out myself because a lot of times I'm going to do more damage than good, right? Yeah. So I trust the expert to do that. We can't all be experts at everything. You know, we go see a doctor when something's wrong. I don't get on WebMD and try to diagnose it myself. I don't try to fix my own car. I certainly don't try to mess with electricity, for goodness sake. We, we, you know, I hire the expert. And so I would just encourage uh, those that are listening to reach out to a financial advisor and ask for professional help uh, to help guide them through um, how to um, protect themselves. Because there's a lot of things that we can do as financial advisors that you may not even be aware of. Uh, I mean, I mentioned diversification earlier, but there's also some things you can, uh, products that you can get into that would protect your initial investment. So people are like, wow, you can do that? Yes, there is a uh, investment out there that protects your investment. You still get the upside of the market, but it protects your initial investment where you won't lose your initial uh, money. And, and people are like, wow, I didn't even know that existed. It does. Mm-hmm. So you need to reach out to a financial advisor to find out that you, there are other options other than just a mutual fund or stocks. So I would, that would be my biggest recommendation. 
Um, I think for, for me, I think the biggest thing that you can do right now is understand your own financial situation, because if you don't understand what's coming in and what's going out and you don't know where every single penny is going, um, it's going to be really difficult for you to, um, to move forward and create any type of strategy. Um, so the first thing, please, please, please just sit down look at everything that's coming in, look at everything that's going out, create a budget. That's what I tell every single one of my clients. The number one thing you need to be doing every single month is creating a budget. Because if you don't tell where your money go, if you do not tell your money where to, to go, it will go somewhere. And you most likely won't know where it is. Yeah, well, a quick question on that. How, how many people in your experience would you say are actually working from a budget on a, on a monthly basis like what what percentage of people would you say actually do that because you say budget i'm like yeah sure but does that actually happen and my wife thankfully she's a dave ramsey i so she's got the google docs and all that so by god's grace i married up and, and my <laughs> wife does an incredible job but as a as a percentage what would you say are the percentage of households that do just that you know, um, I don't have the, I don't have the actual statistic. Um, so just off the top of my head from what I've learned over the years, I would say, you know, only about 20% of households mm -hmm. actually budget consistently every single month. Um, it's very, very low. Um, and I can get that uh, statistic for you later, but it, it's, it's not very high, but if you guys could just budget, I tell you, it will change your life. And when you go to Shelly to start, um, you know, investing in retirement or investing or, you know, going to purchase a house, knowing where your money is going, um, knowing what you have coming in, it's such a huge help. And it's such a huge help to Shelly because she knows what you can afford and what you can do. And she can better assist you when you know your own situation and you understand your own financial situation. Um, it makes it so much simpler for people like Shelly and I to help you and um, get you going in the right direction. Um, and if you don't understand it, or if you, you know, need help, understanding it. You know, I also offer complimentary consultations or, you know, reach out to a friend um, or take an FPU class, or there's tons and tons of podcasts, tons and tons of free materials out there that you could um, delve into to um, learn how to understand your situation, learn how to budget. Right. Well, and that's, and that's kind of a, we, we, one of the things we're talking about is what, what would you do if someone, if someone came to you, either Shelly or Katie and said, Hey, I haven't really been this hasn't been on my mind. You know, I've, hey, I've got some money, I've got income, I have some retirement, but I really have not been thinking tactically or strategically about this, you know, and maybe you just answer that question, but where, where do you start? So for Katie, you say it's obviously budget. Maybe Katie, you can say, what's the next thing that you would do after that? So after we put, create a budget, then we look at the budget and we say, okay, where's, what do you have going out? Are there some things that maybe you've been spending money on that you don't even use? A big thing is subscriptions. We all sign up for all these subscriptions. Oh, $5.99 a month here, $9.99 a month here. Those add up. And those can be something that you could um, get rid of, especially if you're trying to save for an emergency fund or you want to really start uh, plumping up that retirement. Those are places that you can... Um, can slash. And so, um, and I'm not saying that you have to slash everything. Maybe you don't need to, maybe you just look at it and you're like, okay, we're in a good position. Now that we know where our money is, we have sure. this much that we can set aside. We have this much in spending money. Um, and I just want to encourage you that a budget is not, um, is, is not telling you, you can't spend money. It's actually giving you permission to spend and saying, Hey, this is the allowance you set aside for yourself, or this is the cash that you set aside to do whatever you want with this month. But you're just making sure that you have everything in line, that you have your future, you're preparing for your future, you're preparing for your children, and you're creating um, a peaceful and secure environment financially for yourself. That's great. And, and Shelly, what would you say would be the, when I come to you, what, where, where do we always start? What's that first conversation going to entail? So um, we always start with what, um, let's say they've just paid off their debt. I have a lot of Dave Ramsey folks that just paid off their debt. So the first thing is, okay, how much money were you putting towards that debt that you can put towards retirement or investments or whatever their goal is? And, um, and, and we start with that number. Then I like to do uh, what's called a retirement projection, which shows them, okay, if you're doing this and you're this age and you want to retire here, uh, assuming this return, assuming this inflation and this salary, this is when you can retire and not run out of money. Of course, we also have to assume your death. So we assume, you know, a, an age of death. But my point is, is that retirement projection can come back and say, oh, you need to be doing an extra $143 more a month 
for the next 20 years and you made your retirement goal of 65 or 62 or whatever, you know, cause it's all custom as to, sure. um, but that is my favorite thing to do because it's amazing how many people don't think that they've done enough. And when I run the numbers, they're like, oh my gosh, that was so helpful. So they really appreciated that. Um, I tell somebody when they walk in, they always ask me, when's the best time? Should I wait for the election? Should I wait for the next race? Should I, you know, X, Y, Z? My answer is always today, <laughs> whether it's a hundred dollars or 500 or a thousand, it's always today. And bear with me, but I ran some numbers. I just want, I'm going to, I hope this carries well over, over uh, Zoom. So if money doubles, this is a fact, money doubles every seven years at an interest rate of 10%. So when you invest your money here every seven years, if you want to see how much that's worth, it's going to be worth double. So let's assume, and I use $6,000 because that's a Roth IRA maximum amount. So a lot of people want to max out their Roths. So I assumed a $6,000 one-time investment. So not every year, 6,000, just one time, one year, $6,000. If you invested that $6,000 at the age of 30, at the age of 64, your 6,000 would be worth $192,000, okay? If you wait just 13 years and don't start and put that $6,000 in when you're 43, at the same age, 64 years old, you're only down to, you're only at 48,000. That's a hundred and forty-four thousand dollar difference by waiting thirteen years. Because a lot of people want to wait until their kids are out of college. Ugh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on a second. I am so sorry. I need to. I, I put my phone on Zoom. Oh, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> so no, sorry, Cyrus. It's it's all, but it's always hard when it's also hard when people want, have that attitude as well. So I thought you were viscerally viscerally responding to that. That yeah. Okay. Here. It's funny because I didn't turn off my phone, but I did put it on silent, but I forgot I had a four o'clock alarm for something else. Okay. Uh, getting back to that. So my question, my answer is always to do it now, even if it's only a hundred or 200, it doesn't matter what it is. And then start from there and grow. So mm -hmm. maybe every six months, if you started out at $200, then in six months, maybe you add an extra hundred dollars a month to that. Right. And, uh, you know, slowly, but surely you get it up to that, whatever it needs to be, if it's the $500. But um, that would be the biggest thing is that time is on your side time is on your side and you have to start early. Um, and you didn't ask this question, but I want to throw this in here too, because one of the things that I like to tell my clients is please set a good example for your kids mm, yeah. and start talking to your kids about this, whether it's uh, teenagers or college kids or just the young adults, because they're not getting taught this in school. They're just not. I mean, maybe if they take a college course, maybe. Now, if you have children in the LISD, Dave Ramsey does have a Money Matters course curriculum, and it's, um, it's called Money Matters and LISD, and it's an elective. So I have been on the phone with Jane Nelson and Tam Parker and everybody at the state level trying to make that mandatory. Yeah. Um, but then I'm sure other, other industries also want their courses to be mandatory. <laughs> But it teaches them the importance of starting to save for the retirement early. And uh, so I volunteer at two local high schools once a semester for an entire day. Of, uh, and I teach the investments part of that Money Matters class. Just I have a love for kids and, and the kids need to learn it. So I would encourage those watching to talk to your kids about this and have them and show them the value of how much your money can grow when you start out early. Yeah. No, that's, that's very good. You know, the kids component, but then also just, again, when, when to start now, there was that, is there a, a saying, it's not time of the market, it's time in the market that really matters. It right? is, it is. Um, yeah. That's, and that, and that's also for folks, especially, you know, kind of my age who are, who are on the closer to 30, you know, it's, it's a great, it's a great challenge for us to be starting to be aggressive now, um, knowing just the dividends of even small, uh, there's another great quote I've heard recently. It's you know most people underestimate what you oh, overestimate what you can do in a day and underestimate what you can do in ten years, right? You know, or in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, that's that's a great analogy for uh, for finance as well. So so let's let's talk uh, again, kind of moving more in the positive direction. And we've touched on some of this already. But what would you say from both of your perspectives is the greatest opportunity from maybe a financial perspective that we that we can take advantage of right now? 
you know, I can look at this two different ways. I, the way I, I want to look at it is the greatest opportunity is that it was a wake up call. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that once, I mean, the markets are going to correct and they're going to come back down, but I'm hoping it's not that bad, but I'm hoping because we had 11 years of up markets. So, I mean, you have all everybody in their thirties that have really never even seen, you know, a down market as, you know, in their adult life. So I, I'm thankful that it happened. I, I think it brought the families closer together with the uh, staying at home order. I think that it made people realize, oh, maybe I'm invested too aggressively, or maybe I'm invested in this and I don't really want that. I want this. So um, that is an opportunity that I see, kind of one of those hidden opportunities that you would have never expected out of this. Um, the so I've had some people ask me, so what stock do you recommend? Is there any opportunities that I can take uh, a certain deal. stock? Yeah, what's the hot <laughs> deal? Okay, well, the hot deal would have been to get into Zoom last year. <laughs> <laughs> Right. But not now. I mean, not now. I mean, it's, it's already, you know, it's already too late. So, um, I mean, I say it's too late. It may not be, but it's certainly not going to be the huge opportunity that it was for those that got into it back in, you know, February, March. But um, that, and then I just go back to my diversification. There is no real market opportunity. You just need to stay steady um, and follow the Dave Ramsey rule of just invest, diversify and invest in mutual funds. Uh, that's the best place to do it and uh, keeps you out of individual stocks and the risks that are associated with those individual stocks. Um, but I, I like the opportunity that it's kind of made us, it was like a little bit of a wake up call without it. Yeah. That's great. Katie, what about you? Yeah, I would, I would agree with Shelly. I mean, this is a great opportunity for everyone to have that wake up call and to realize, whoa, I have not realized at till this, this moment just now, how stressful money is to me and how much um, this affects me on the day in and day out, how it affects my relationships, um, how it affects my marriage. Um, and so to, to get this in control, to get that peace and to get some security, um, to get some peace of mind around this, it's going to, it's not only going to help you in your future, your financial future, you're going to see it um, bear fruit in so many other areas of your life. So this is just a really great opportunity for you um, to take control and start, um, start being intentional with your finances, start being intentional with your relationships and your communication with, um, with those, with the people around you, um, especially your husband or your wife. Um, I find a lot of times when I'm coaching uh, married couples that they've never talked about money um, and it's a big point of contention for them. And when they start talking about money, um, yeah, it's hard. It's, it's, it's a struggle those first couple months, but when they come out of it, they feel closer, they feel stronger. They feel like they're working together towards something and that's really super exciting. So um, I would just say, you know, everything, you can flip everything around and make it positive. And I am a big proponent of that. So let's flip this around and say, you know what, we're going to, take this as a, as a realization and we're going to move forward and we're going to do something great with it. That's great. And that was, that was certainly our experience when, when I first got married, you know, uh, my wife and I would, would, you know, constantly go back and forth about money. And, and once we got on that same page, it was amazing. Of course, nothing's perfect, but um, it really, it really took a, a point of contention and really made it a point where we were operating to your point as, as a team. So that's a, that's great. Um, so let me, let me ask you both, um, about, and I'll talk, and I realize that you are both resources and I'll talk about how we can get in touch with you at the end of our call. But, but in terms of a tool, a book, a resource that people could, would go to, what would be one thing that you would each recommend, uh, for, for people listening that they could, they could, um, take advantage of? I think we're going to have it. Katie, you go first. Oh, you know, it did. We, time out. I bet it's the I same resource. Yeah. I need to make this question I harder. Dave Ramsey, <laughs> of course, is a great resource. Doesn't count. What's the next step? <laughs> yeah, because he's got podcasts. He's got I, books. Yeah. Uh, he's got his workbook. Um, yeah, he, he's a great resource. And it's just no nonsense. Right. It's, it's no mm -hmm. nonsense. There's actually great even some story. humor to it. I've uh, hired a new financial advisor here, and he's a recent college graduate. And um, he's studying for his licenses and things like that. And I told him as part of his duties, he had to listen to Dave Ramsey every day because mm -hmm. I want him to know. And I hear him in there laughing all the time. So I don't want anybody watching this today to think, oh, my gosh, I, well, that, that would be, you know, like, 
going to the dentist every day. It's really not. It's really, inter I mean, he makes it entertaining. So it is. So that is a good resource. Um, I have a lot of resources on my website. I am not stingy with my resources at all. The retirement projection calculator that I was talking about. Of course, I think you need my help in determining how to put some of those numbers together. Sure. But once you see how I do that, uh, I mean, I've got it out there on my website for you to go in and do it every six or 12 months if you want to, to see where you're at. So uh, I share, uh, I've got a lot of financial calculators at the very bottom of my website if uh, they want to go out and look. Um, but I, uh, that and Dave Ramsey. Well, why don't you give us, and we'll, we'll put the link in the description, but maybe what, what's your website? Uh -huh. It's visionaryfinancialgroup.com. So com, it's okay. all spelled out, no abbreviations. Um, or you can even type Shelly Dodge Flower Mound, uh, and that'll bring up the website on on the first page as well. Okay. Well, and we'll 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 link that in the description as well. Oh, thank uh, you. But Katie, what about what about for you? What would be a great resource? And we know Dave Ramsey, but what's another tool or a, a blog or a book that you found helpful? Well, um, I'm always going to go back to budgeting. I think that's just the number one thing that you need to do. And so the perfect app for that is called the Every Dollar app. It's free. Um, you can plug in all your numbers right on your phone. You don't have to have a computer. You can also look it up on the computer. If you're a nerd like me, you can export it to Excel and look at it that way too. Um, but I would really strongly encourage you to get that app. Um, there's also all sorts of other um, budgeting apps uh, on Android or Apple. Um, that's just the one that I use that I really love. Um, I would recommend downloading that. Um, and then also, I mean, I know we said besides Dave Ramsey, but honestly, folks, he just has so many tools on his website. He's got tons of books. There's all sorts of Dave Ramsey personalities out there um, that specialize in various things, whether you're starting your own business or retirement um, or just trying to, to make it, you know, you know, save money, but also live a, a great fulfilling life and take your kids out and have fun. I mean, he's got it all people. Um, but yes, definitely the every dollar app start budgeting today. Um, if you, if you're at September 3rd, it's a perfect time to get that budget going for the rest of September. So I would just strongly uh, encourage you and challenge you to do that this month. Well, that's fantastic. And, and so here's what I'll do. And, and, and obviously we, there's a uh, show to your point, you said there's lots of financial advisors, lots of coaches. And so we know that, that you are just, but one of many, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll post some information where we can, where folks, if they want to talk more, they can get in touch with both of you. Um, specifically, Shelly, you focus on more of the financial, the big picture, investment, kind of that level. Um, Katie, you do more of the individual budgeting and, and really walking people through on a day-to-day -day basis. And so um, we'll make sure that people have access to get to you if they have more questions or, or things that they want to talk more about. But I just want to say thank you so much to both of you for offering your time and, and your wisdom and really your heart. That's what I really appreciate. It's clear that you care about people. Um, you care about people succeeding and experiencing peace. I know that's, a, that's something we all want to see. So I want to thank you both. And again, appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. All right. Take care, guys. All right.